Hi and welcome back to a new video. One of the questions I'm getting quite frequently recently is, so I just acquired my 3080, 3070, 3090 finally, and now it's a question, should I water cool the card and which cooler should I even get? We will check this question today with this RTX 3070 Strix, which is kind of like a, a tricky question, also a tricky case, but that is something that I'm reading every single day. And it's tricky because this is a very good um, aftermarket design from Asus, the Strix, with this beefy cooler. We have a ton of very good VRMs sitting behind it. And usually you're getting such a card because you thought that the Founders Edition would not be sufficient, I don't know, cooling-wise or design-wise maybe, I don't know, or probably also regarding the PCB components. And then the question is, did you buy it because it has a good cooler and then you're thinking of upgrading to water cooling or why did you even buy this card in the first place? Sonic, the heart of your system. There are several advantages of water cooling a card and I'm sure you, most of you will be absolutely aware of those advantages. The major advantage obviously is the cooling capacity. The card will be sitting cooler, which is just a subjective thing. So you're thinking, okay, my card is sitting currently like at 65 degrees Celsius and that's maybe a little bit too hot for my taste. And I would like to have it sitting at like 45 degrees Celsius. And that is a temperature you're realistically always achieving with such a water cooling custom water block. But then there's also the positive aspect that whenever you're cooling a semiconductor uh, to lower temperature you're also decreasing the power consumption and that is probably the best aspect about like water cooling custom water cooling because by lowering the power consumption of the card you're automatically also increasing the performance at least in theory it will be tough to measure um, just measuring the power consumption itself will be di uh, difficult due to the NVIDIA boost but we can probably just check if there is like a performance benefit because if we manage to keep the GPU colder it should have less power draw and therefore a slightly higher boost which is what we're trying to show today. To test the theory we were just talking about we are using this Corsair XG7 custom water cooling block from Corsair. By the way don't be confused that it says ASUS Strix RTX 3090 because this should also th fit on uh, 3080 and 3070. They all share exactly the same PCB that's why it should perfectly fit and it's also kind of like a new generation of the Corsair blocks it has a different terminal than previously. Uh, yeah, never used one of those before myself. That's why I also want to test this out of personal interest. Once again, we're running Remnant from the Ashes as benchmark in 4K with the Ryzen 9 5950X. We're hitting about 74 to 75 FPS in average and about 55 FPS in the 1% low. We just passed times by extreme GT1 after a warm up phase of about five minutes. We have the score of 43 point. 9 FPS and now just to double check uh, the frequency in GPU-C on the left side it was just right here um, we had the warm-up phase but now we have about yeah 2010 2025 megahertz for the GT1 and the temperature was usually sitting at like 62, 63, 64 degrees Celsius. The Corsair water cooling block should be made out of, let's say, three or four materials in general. The outer part right here, which is like black anodized, is aluminium. The yeah, cooling block part is nickel plated copper. Then we have some acrylic parts right here. And also like this part on the back right here is a plastic cover, which looks nice. I mean, yeah, in general, I like the design of those blocks. It's obviously, I mean, it has RGB if you care about that. But what I like the most about all those Corsair blocks is the fact that the thermal pads and everything is completely pre-installed, especially if you're not familiar with mounting those blocks. Like if you never did that before, if you're new to custom water cooling, then this is the absolute best feature about those blocks. You don't have to like care about is this, is this like 0.5 millimeter pad? Is this a 1.5 millimeter pad? Am I placing it in the wrong position? This is what I absolutely like and I wish that EK and all the other manufacturers would do exactly the same. You have this cover on here, which is protecting like the thermal paste so you don't touch it and that's it. You just, you get it like that. You put your card on top and then you mount it on there. Yeah, well, you also have the backplate included which you will put on the back, obviously, but it is really simple. And it didn't even take 10 minutes. It is very straightforward. Just remove the cooler from your original card, like the original air cooler, then attach your cooling uh, block from the front, and then mount the back plate, mount it with all the screws. You don't need any washers. They're all the same size, the screws, and there's also thermal pads on the back on the back plate. Just peel off the film and then you're good to go. Very simple, very straightforward. Let's see 
what kind of temperatures we can get. The card is attached to the water cooling loop and by the way those Corsair blocks they don't have a dedicated flow direction because they don't have this like central access point whatever to the structure. It's just flowing right through so it doesn't matter if you have your intake or outtake on the left or on the right position. It has the positive aspect that you don't have to care about the flow direction once you're mounting the card inside your loop. but you're losing like half a degree, maybe a degree. I don't know what the exact performance impact of that is. It's not massive because there is still plenty of surface area inside. It's quite helpful that we have a lot of air inside the system right now because that way we can see the flow perfectly inside this water cooling loop or inside this water cooling block. You can see the air or the water intake right here and then through the structure and back out but then you also have like on top right here because this part between the copper and the acrylic is not sealed with like an o-ring then you can see some air bubbles going right above this it's like completely lost the water which is going above here and you also have some water going across here you can see some like air and water going across here they're all missing the structure also on the bottom right here so technically it would be better if they added an additional o-ring all the way here and all the way like up here this way they would force all the water through the structure but now we're losing some percentage of the water it's not going to be that much it's maybe like i don't know like five percent maybe but that is where you're maybe missing your last half degree or one degree Celsius if you're aiming for the best temperature possible. I just fixed the fan speed or the pump speed to 26% PWM speed and that is probably what you're going to use in your 24-7 rig because this way there is no way you can hear the pump. And even in this configuration you can still see some of the bubbles like passing through here, passing through here, especially like passing through here on the bottom. So even with like lower pressure, it still happens. I just passed another loop test of Times by Extreme and then the, the single Times by Extreme test for the frame or performance. And now you can see we had 43.9 before and now we have 45.1. So there's definitely a performance increase. And the reason why we saw this increase is the increased clock. We went up from like 2010 to 2040 without manually overclocking. It's just due to the boost, due to the lower temperature, which results in a lower power draw. The temperatures are not the lowest I've ever seen on water cooling. It's like 51, 53. It's not the lowest, but it's definitely a good improvement. One thing I quickly would like to highlight, that's something I often see in discussions online, is if you have some like air bubbles stuck somewhere in the structure, especially on those GPU cooling blocks. And like right here, we have this bubble on top and it just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whatsoever. 99% of your cooling will happen due to the structure right here. And if there is some like copper exposed to air due to the bubble, yeah, it doesn't matter. Same goes to this one on the bottom. It will not affect your performance. It might not be perfect visually, but then you can just always rotate your system a little bit until all the bubbles are gone. In Remnant from the Ashes, to keep it short, results are exactly the same, 75%, 75 FPS average and like 50 to 52, no, 49, 1% low. Yeah, it could be measurement tolerance, but it's basically the same as before. The XG7 is definitely not a bad block, especially when it comes to the mounting itself and the user friendliness, they did a very good job. You have all the same screws, like the thermal pad is pre-applied, you have a backplate included, which is also a good thing, especially keeping in mind that price-wise it's pretty much the same as all the other blocks from like EK and Aqua Computer, but you have a backplate included. But then on the other hand, performance wise, it's probably not the best block uh, out there. So if you're aiming for the best temperatures possible, then you should probably go for EK or Aqua Computer. You would probably have to check which one is the best. I'm not sure right now, but um, I've definitely seen better temperatures so far. And like just looking at the design when you see all those air bubbles and like the mid center structure and everything like that, there is definitely room for performance improvements. But if you don't care about that, which usually I mean, it's not making a huge difference. If you have your card sitting at 46 degrees Celsius or like 50 degrees Celsius, your card does not care. But if you care, then you should look for a different block. Otherwise, thanks for tuning in and see you next time. Bye bye.
the card is attached to the loop, as you can see. And by the way, those... Ah. Ouch. Ah. Cheek.